Over the past couple of days, we've been getting some great reports when it's come to injuries for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, even if we go back to Monday, remember when Zay Flowers went down with that hip drop tackle NFL? I ain't forget. But when Zay Flowers went down, we were all like, oh, please no, please no, please no, please no. But then he ended up coming back into the game. But somebody who didn't come back to the game was Marlon Humphrey. But we got the update on him that he did not suffer a serious injury. And then a couple of days ago, we got Arthur Millett back. Yesterday, we got Jalen Alma Davis back. And then yesterday, too, we also got our guy. Keaton Mitchell back So things been on the up and up When it comes to injuries For the Baltimore Ravens But today mm, It's not looking so good For a couple of Baltimore Ravens Mainly Zay Flowers And Marlon Humphrey Now with Marlon Humphrey we talked about this during the game when he went out, especially because the Baltimore Ravens had such a quick turnaround with them playing a the game on Monday night and then following game being on Sunday afternoon that with Marlon leaving for the remainder of the game against the Bucks, that I, I couldn't really expect him to play uh, in the game against the Browns. And if there is one to sit out, and that's no offense to the Browns, of course, but this would probably be the one for him to sit out. E even if they were playing somebody who was better than the Browns, then you, you don't want to rush him because you want Marlon Humphrey back for the long term. So I'm sure he'll be out this game, but Zay Flowers is where it's even more concerning for me and I think it should be that much more concerning for you too. Now, of course, we won't know till we know and tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow is really the day that really determines everything. Even though I'm sure what Harbaugh is going to say, he's probably going to be like, oh, well, Zay Flowers, he'll be a game time decision. I'm sure he'll say something along those lines. But normally, for John Harbaugh, if you can, if you miss the first couple of days of practice, all right, cool, is what it is, but Friday is the day where if you miss Friday's practice, it ain't likely that you're going to be playing. And with Zay Flowers, now what was tricky about him is that while he has not practiced for the past two days, um, he did leave the game on Monday, and then he came back and he finished it. So with that being like, it's like, okay, maybe a good sign could be that they are resting Zay Flowers. They just resting that ankle, probably got rolled up on a bit. Maybe it was bothering him a little bit and whatnot. And we know Zay Flowers, being a wide receiver, you need them ankles more than ever. But being a Zay Flowers, you definitely need your ankles because your job is to take people's ankles when you got the ball in your hands and to obviously get open like he has been doing a lot of this season. So... We need Zay Flowers to be right. So that's where it's very concerning. But with Marlon Humphrey, I, I just I, I don't see him playing in this game. Again, same thing with him, though. Tomorrow will be and tell the real story. Now let's look at some other players as well. Uh, Rasheen Ali, he hasn't practiced the past two days. He's not going to play in this game. And Jeff Zrebic did talk about with Rasheen Ali that he could be a possible candidate for injury reserve, especially with Jalen Armand Davis coming back. Um, he's been active for the past couple of games. Uh, they put him on the active roster for the past couple of games, but – Hasn't gotten any carries, as expected. I mean, we do got a Derrick Henry. We do got a Justice Hill. And with Rasheen Ali, he's not really going to have a role in this offense, especially because Keaton Mitchell is on the way back. Um, also, uh, Jalen Armand Davis, he was limited yesterday, but today he practiced in full. So beautiful. Uh, we talked about Zay Flowers. Malik Harrison, yesterday he was limited. And remember, yesterday was just an estimation because it was a walkthrough. But today was the real stuff. And Malik Harrison, he practiced in full. Full. So Malik Harrison should be back in the mix uh, this Sunday. Uh, we talked about Marlon Humphrey. Travis Jones. Travis Jones, that's a big one right there because he didn't practice yesterday, even though it was an estimation, but today they said he was limited, even though several different reporters said Travis Jones was not looking good today. He did not, did not look himself, and he's dealing with an ankle injury. So even if he does, and, and that makes sense now. I remember um, during the game, we didn't really see much of Travis Jones. After the game, when they showed the snap count, I was like, oh, Travis Jones, he ain't really played that many snaps. And it was like, man, why? Why is Travis Jones not playing that many snaps? It's like, come on now. He's, he's been really good this season. But it's because he was dealing with an injury, and that made it all make sense. So with him being limited in today's practice, um, he may be active in the game against the Browns, but he might not really be that active uh, against the Browns. We'll see. Now, Arthur Millette, good news on him. He was limited yesterday. Again, yesterday was an estimation, but today he practiced in full. So Arthur Millette, he should be good to go. Uh, Keaton Mitchell, he was limited both days. We're not expecting him for a couple more weeks. Um, TJ Tampa, that's another one. Didn't practice yesterday, but didn't practice today either. So losing a little depth in the secondary. That's like we, we gain some, but then we end up losing some because, hey, we gain Arthur Millette, gain Jalen Armand Davis, but then we down Marlon Humphrey possibly. 
uh, and looking like we're going to be down TJ Tampa, possibly. Again, tomorrow we'll tell the full story. Uh, then Broderick Washington, he was limited yesterday. He practiced in full today. And Nate Wiggins, he didn't practice yesterday but in the walkthrough, but today he practiced in full. So that's good for Nate Wiggins and this secondary. So looks like, hey, Nate Wiggins, it's, it's going to be on you, my friend. It's looking like it's going to be on you, Brandon Stevens, Arthur Millett, or Darius Washington, and I really hope for these Baltimore Ravens sakes that all cornerbacks this week in practice, they hit the jugs machine because y'all got to catch them interceptions. Now we've got to my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. For the Team Keep It Clean patrons, and if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz, but for the patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. For everybody else, you can send your question at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Real quick, remember a little bit ago, we were doing a contest from Heart of the City where you could win not one but two tickets to the Ravens' blackout game uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals on November 7th. Well, uh, we have a winner, and that is none other than Jermaine Mitchell. So, Jermaine, enjoy the game. Have a blast. You're going to have so, so, so much fun. And I believe this is Jermaine's very first time in Baltimore so he is gonna love it it ain't nothing like actually being at a Ravens game so we proud of you enjoy yourself have fun and come home with a Baltimore Ravens win first question came from a team keep it clean patron my guy Keontae he said I'm kind of disappointed in the Ravens why Keontae why are you disappointed uh Devin White has been a free agent and we didn't look his way at all no they didn't but why that why would that disappoint you for what like they not even using the linebackers that they got correctly as far as Trent Simpson, especially in pass defense and Roquan Smith and pass defense. <laughs> yeah, it ain't been pretty well. Anyway, like, I don't get why that would be upsetting. But anyway, maybe you'll explain it. He said, uh, for at least one year, uh, for at least a one-year rental role type player type of guy, uh, him and Roe would absolutely dominate in the red zone and would be someone that could have pushed Trent to get better in certain situations. While I don't feel like he is much of a necessity, I think that was the reason we grabbed Welch, right? But anyway, one name you said that I would... Okay, well, depth, I guess. I mean, you could have signed him to the practice squad. I know one of my guys had, um, he was asking me about this the other day. He was like, oh, when, when he got released. He was like, oh, why, why don't we sign him? I said, I guess they could sign him to the practice squad or something like that. But to the active roster, they ain't going to do that. But anyway, um, he said, one name you said that I would absolutely love to see in purple and black is Micah Parsons. He is a do-it-all linebacker and can play some good enough, um, I mean, some good edge rush and not unfamiliar with blitzing from the middle like in college. He is a positionless player the Ravens like. I, I think it would be awesome to pair him with Adafi away again uh, and let those guys cause some trouble. My only thing would be uh, we would have to let Malik Harrison go to the Cowboys with some picks to get him or even someone like Ajabo, and are we okay with losing that? If you ask, and this ain't no offense to those guys, but... If you ask any single Ravens fan that question, they will all collectively have the exact same answer. But Dallas, they ain't letting Micah Parsons go nowhere. Ravens defense. Next question came from my guy, Albert. He said, hey, Raven, I watched one of your earlier videos where you said that you didn't believe there was a shot that Zach Orr would be fired midseason because the Ravens are too loyal. Now, you are correct. They are loyal. However, they have shown in the past that if a coordinator isn't getting it done, there is a shot they will make a change to coordinate a midseason. Remember back in 2012 when they canned Cam Cameron midseason? Additionally, the Ravens brought in Dean Pease, who we won a Super Bowl with that same year. I got a feeling that they may let this experiment with or go for a while, but if there's no sign of improvement, I can see the Ravens making that change to Dean Pease at some point. Right now, we are winning despite this abysmal defense, but if we lose a game or two, I have no doubt that they will make that change. That's a good point about Cam Cameron, but... Was that Cam Cameron's first job uh, as an offensive coordinator? I don't believe so. And also, too, Cam Cameron's roots were not with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, now, with Zach Orr, we talked about the hit. He came up from the Baltimore Ravens, started his career on the field, the Baltimore Ravens, and then transitioned to it off the field uh, with the Ravens, too. But, yeah, I just, I just don't see them doing it, especially with him being in his first year and with all the love that they really got for Zach Orr. Like, they got a whole lot of love for it. And Ravens are very big uh, when it comes to loyalty, uh, for better or for worse, man. Um, but, anyway, uh, he said, I hope Orr gets it figured out. Oh, yeah, we all do, for sure. He said, because I like him. But if his defense struggles against the Browns, I say go ahead and make that change and let Dean Pease get things figured out. The Ravens do not need a top five defense with how dominant our offense is. But, man, being at the bottom of the league. <laughs> 
He said, man, being at the bottom of the league will bite us in the butt eventually. Anyway, thanks for reading my email and keep it up. Go Ravens. Appreciate you, Al. Next question came from Cody. He said, Deontay Johnson and Clowney reunion? Okay, let's see what he's talking about. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. Long time fan. Been watching you since, I believe, Lamar's rookie year. And this is my first question. So, I'm going to keep it short. Hey, Cody, shout out to you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Hopefully, Lamar Jackson finishes his story this year. I know some of y'all will get that reference. Anyway, he said, with the Panthers looking like they're going back in the rebuild, Mode. Once again, what do you think it will cost to bring not only Deontay Johnson, but to also have a welcome home party for our boy Jadavian Clowney? Oh, I, man, I would love uh, Jadavian Clowney. I mean, I loved him when the Ravens got him last year. I was, that was my favorite signing last year. Um, but if they brought him back, like, because that, that boy could play. And maybe, and I know, he went to Carolina to be with his family, though. So I wonder, I wonder how that would work. Obviously, the Panthers can trade him, but I wonder if he would even want to leave. Like, even, obviously, it would just be for this year, and what, but I wonder if he would even want to leave. I, I don't know. Um, but he said, what do you think it would cost to bring not only Deontay Johnson, but to also have a welcome home party for our boy, Jadavian Clowney? I would almost would say a package of a second and a fifth, like we did for Roquan, would get that deal done. Uh, what do you think it would cost, and what would be your opinion if a trade like that went down? Hey, that that would be solid, uh, be an additional wide receiver. Um, Deontay Johnson, that's one that used to play for the Steelers, I believe. And he was solid. He, he was straight. Well, nothing crazy. Like, oh, my goodness, what is Deontay Johnson? But... Somebody that could come in, contribute. Would it be the upgrade over Nelson Aguilar? Mm. 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 Yeah, maybe a little more explosive. I mean, but Nelly, Nelly be moving now, man. You see Nelly, Nelly when he catch that ball, he make the most out of his play. So, um, I wouldn't mind. I would more so, more so, uh, Jadavian Clowney would be what I would prefer uh, from the Carolina Panthers because Jadavian Clowney, like that, that that man can play. I don't know how he been doing this year, um, and maybe it could be one of those things where Jadavian Clowney just coasting. He like, oh man, we ain't doing nothing over here. I'm getting paid. I'm chilling, man. I'm taking it easy. But if he came to the Ravens, like he already got a chunk of money from the Panthers, and he might come to the Ravens and be like, oh, we got something to play for again. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. So, um, what would it take uh to get both of them? Oh, uh, you said a second and a fifth. I see the Panthers doing bad, and they could be unloaded. I could, see, I could see a third and a fifth, or a third and a fifth and a seventh. Like I don't think nothing crazy. Maybe even a fourth, fifth, and seventh. Something like like I don't think it'll be anything crazy, cause. They ain't doing nothing over there, and they like ah oh, whatever. They 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 got forced to put Bryce Young back into the lineup, so they ain't, Panthers ain't doing nothing right now. So they could be like, you know what, we'll take what we can get. And he said, P.S. I know I'm a little late to the party, but congrats on your baby girl. Hey, appreciate that, Cody. Thank you, man. Jerry Judy over Nelson Aguilar. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, get Jerry Judy. Wasn't he chilling and working out with Lamar once upon a time? I like him over Aguilar. Plus, he got chemistry with Lamar and they friends. Or just get D Hop. Oh, <laughs> a little late, too late for that. Even though he did send this. Uh, two days ago He said either is fine with me uh, Even better Go after Miles Garrett Or Max Crosby Get a pass rusher As well as Marshawn Lattimore Or Denzel Ward Let's go all out Let's get this ring For Christ's sake I don't care Let's ball Get better And win championships God bless the family The channel And our Ravens So Jerry Judy Over Nelson Aguilar Jerry Judy Will be more explosive um, I know Jerry Judy He got the drops He's here and there um, But Jerry Judy uh, It wouldn't be bad With Ray Again a third receiver um, but I, I feel like he, mm, 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 I feel like for me, if I really got to think about it like that, then I feel like it really would, wouldn't really move me right now. Um, if I get to like really ponder about it like that, then it'd be like, uh, I, I don't really think so. But like if it somebody like Corden Sullen though, like that would be better in my opinion. Um, Cause and it's basically the way, the way Colin Sutton would really complement uh, our receivers right now. I think he would be an excellent complement to them as far as what he could do, like a DK Metcalf. I know that's probably not happening, but the way he would complement our receivers, I think that would be excellent as well. So I would be looking for somebody who more so complements the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers than just adding somebody just to add them. Next question came from my guy Nigel. He said, "What's good? The Bucks proved the issue is Brandon Stevens. Uh, they was attacking him all day and." early and isolating him by occupying Marcus Williams with another receiver that's why he couldn't get help on either of those touchdowns either Wiggins or Marlowe got to travel or trade for a cornerback like Lattimore past defense is still having blown assignments because they keep rotating people in and out for example Trent left the running back or he yeah he left the running back 
go free, a uh, scot free, because he was chasing a different running back. That let his own. But when you don't get that many snaps because we play dime too much and no rhythm, that happens. Uh, or got to show love to the linebackers and leave them on the field. Simpson is athletic enough to cover. He was the reason in week one we even had a chance to win that tip ball and almost picked against Mahomes. Yeah. I, I uh, in different words, been saying the same thing about Trent Simpson. He needs to be out there more. He needs to be out there a lot more, in my opinion. And again, we talked about this before. You got different packages and with different personnel and whatnot. But Trent Simpson is somebody who show you, like, hey, he is very versatile in what he can do. Very explosive player. Um, and he does not look scared. Doesn't look uncomfortable. It, even though this is his second year. Even though it's kind of like his first his first year starting. Well, kind of starting, but he don't look scared. He don't look like timid or anything like that. Um, he, he looks ready. So I would say give him more responsibility. Unstoppable force versus immovable object. Next question came from my guy, Nicholas. He said, I ain't great when I haven't asked a question in quite some time, but the trade deadline is like Christmas for contending teams. I'm usually 100% all in on defense, especially regarding trades. I pounded the table for Roquan Smith as soon as Josh Bynes was getting significant playing time. And last year, I was certain we would trade for an edge rusher. This year, however, I don't think one defensive player is enough to make a significant difference uh, we have players they just need to tighten the screws pass off coverages correctly and put their head up for the ball i'm looking at you brandon uh, the only thing i can see us that i can see making an impact would be a game wrecking edge like max crosby or miles garrett but that's a little too rich for our taste in my opinion alternatively corner that plays for picks could also make a difference think marcus peters but I don't know enough about J.C. Horn, Jones from the Pats, or any other rumor corners to have a full opinion on them. All right, here we go. He said the Rams, they're trying to deal cup for a second, is a no-brainer in my opinion. Our defense is borderline uns... Oh, excuse me. I read, that. I read that wrong. He ain't right or wrong. Our offense is borderline unstoppable. Because, yeah, it wouldn't make no sense. If I, if I said our defense is borderline unstoppable, <laughs> that wouldn't have made no sense. Anyway, um, and I genuinely don't know what teams would even do if we had Coop, Cooper Cup on board. Now, I know his skill set overlaps with Zay and Bait. That's, that's true. Uh, but he's such an X factor, I really don't think it matters. Honestly, it would just mean he could fit right into the playbook. I know Sutton and Williams would be good additions too. <laughs> Hold up, Williams, 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 Williams. Williams, what, 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 what Williams are we thinking of? I am having a brain freeze right now because I'm Williams, Williams, Williams. I, it sounds like you're talking about a wide receiver. I cannot think of who that is right now. I, I, my apologies, y'all. And he said, I know Sutton and Williams would be good additions, too, and give us that big 50-50 ball guy. I just think the playoff and Super Bowl experience and the ability to play chemistry ball when the play breaks down uh, makes Cooper Cup a perfect fit. The price at a second is honestly a steal if they eat some of his money. I'll throw in a fifth just to steal, just to steal the deal. Uh, anyone who watches your channel would know uh, you agree. But I <laughs> hey, you... <laughs> Make a strength stronger. And again, hey, Zay Flowers, he ain't been practicing. Hey, make a strength strong. Anyway, he said, anyone who watches your channel would know you agree, but I had to reiterate this idea to hopefully speak it into existence. Sincerely, Nick. I'm still trying to think of who Williams is. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Big Head Mode. He said, yo, what's good, man? I got a question. Who are your top three quarterbacks that can go to any team with their head coach and OC and ultimately make their team better and in which order? Okay, so it sounds like you're talking about with a, a team that has their head coach and OC in place already. It sounds like it, but I would go uh, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Josh Allen, if those are the stipulations. He said, also, any person who counted Andrews, Bateman, or Tucker out need to shut up. Or like Lamar says, stop talking to us. Uh, and I feel like if you are a real Ravens fan or a Lamar fan and been here since the beginning... You would feel me when I say these wins are nice and all, but we really just waiting for playoff time to prove a lot of people wrong. Yeah. Now, the regular season is great, too, because it, it, it got to start somewhere, because I know a lot of Ravens fans, especially after last year, that AFC Championship loss. I know a lot of Ravens fans have been on the same thing. Like, look, regular season, it don't matter. We ain't worried about regular season, and I get that. But regular, it has to start in regular season in order for us to even have a conversation about playoffs. And then when we get to the playoffs, they obviously got to take it to a whole another level. But – that's real right there. We we, we we waiting on that. So Ravens got to get there first. But if and when they get there, they got to keep this thing going, man. They got to keep because if. No, this got to be the year, man. Last year was supposed to be the year, but it didn't happen. 2019 was supposed to be the year, but this got to be the year. You got to stop Chiefs in their tracks. That The three Pete. No, we don't want to hit no Pete. We don't want to hit none of that. None of it. Ravens got the team again. 
to get it done, they they got to make it happen for real. So I appreciate you, fam, for actually taking your time out and engaging with us. Uh, and to any of the flock that hear this, man, get this man a like at least. Hey, I, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And like I always say, man, this this is my favorite part of the videos because this is all y'all. All y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This is all y'all. So I appreciate y'all taking your time to send in these questions and your thoughts about whatever going on with our Ravens and really just around the league and whatnot. But I appreciate y'all time. So thank you. EDC and draft picks. Next question came from my guy James. He said, why does EDC let the Chiefs make a move to help them uh, when they're weak at a position of need when that same target is a need for the Ravens? Then says that after it's over, wait till next year. That sounds like the old Dallas Cowboys manager. He is not the same as Ozzy when uh, it came to get the goods to let the OC and QB cook with. Ozzy Newsom to get getting the goods to let the let the QB cook with. You ain't you ain't see, you ain't watch Joe Flacco. You ain't see what Joe Flacco had and a lot of times didn't have. Now I know they end up getting Anquan Bolden and that was great. Paired him with Tory Smith and that was amazing. So that 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 was nice and they they did obviously get it done. As soon as they got it done, that boy say you give me that. Taking Anquan Bolden back. You know what? Let's send him away. For what? A six-round pick to the 49ers? I said, oh, boy. But then a couple years later, they did get Steve Smith Sr. And that was nice for the first year. Second and third year, he got hurt. But um, Ozzy was not the best at providing weapons when, for the quarterbacks. Um, EDC, he hasn't been the best at providing weapons for the quarterbacks either. Um, it's just been an organization thing that they definitely need to improve on. Uh, for sure But as far as what you were saying As far as uh, EDC let the Chiefs make a move To help them Like If EDC ain't want DeAndre Hopkins He can't do nothing about that He, he, he can't trade for DeAndre Hopkins And just keep him hostage Be like alright We keeping DeAndre Hopkins So just so the Chiefs can't get him No uh, Whatever move EDC is gonna make We just We gotta wait it out And see what it ends up being um, Whether it's a receiver Whether it's a corner Whether it's an edge Whatever it ends up being um, But it's It's something right now That What it seems like Like it's gonna come out of nowhere uh, We all just waiting and hoping and expecting We saw the Chiefs make a move We saw the Bills uh, make a move So some heavy hitters in the AFC We just waiting when it's gonna be our turn Making a trade Next question came from my guy Ejon He said engraving West Coast Cali Raven here I doubt Baltimore trades for an offensive player With Keith Mitchell practicing And they haven't used Tez Walker yet That leaves all the defensive players right for the taking LOL If b can only trade for one of these players Who would you want the most? All right so first he says Darius Smith, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, mm, Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, because someone has to replace Eddie Jackson. I haven't seen him make one. <laughs> he said I haven't seen him make one impact play yet. Yikes. Also, Roman Kyle Hamilton is great, but I'd rather see him play the safety position and actually use his range and speed to cover more often. And who knows? He might grab some interceptions since the corners seem to drop at least two a game. <laughs> That's something to think about, because it's like, man, but Kyle Hamilton. You don't want to fix what's not broken because we we talked about that all offseason, especially with a new defensive coordinator that we don't want Kyle Hamilton. We, we want Kyle Hamilton to still just be free to just be a baller, not even a safety, not a linebacker, not a slot corner, just to be a straight up baller. But it's like now with the defense struggling, especially on the back end, you had to think about putting Kyle Hamilton back there someplace. And, and they do, but maybe a little bit more, maybe, but... That could just change a lot of different stuff as far as the defense. But it could change it for better, so who knows? Um, now, uh, which one of those players would I want the most if I had to choose between Zadarius Smith, Marshawn Lattimore, or Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger? Mm, I will probably say Marshawn Lattimore um, because he gives you – I mean, all these guys got starting experience, obviously. But um, with Marshawn Lattimore, um, he would just give you a good corner. Somebody who's been there, done that, been in the league corner, uh, in the league, knows how to play. Um, knows how to go against the very best. Um, and he's, he's been there before. And he's a former, well, I can't say that because I was say he's a former New Orleans Saints. And you know how, how them Saints get down when they come to the Ravens. But uh, I know Marcus Williams, he ain't, it ain't been too good for him this year. But he'll turn it around, man. He'll, he'll, he'll turn it around. Zach Orgon get this thing right, man. He got no choice uh, but to. Uh, but then he said, uh, and just like Tennessee, when it comes to trading with the Ravens, yet helping Kansas City, I'm out. We need pass rushers. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, we need a Max or Miles type of rusher and should be willing to give up picks for them. Calvin Oy is our only true pass rusher. A great pass rusher will help our secondary, in my opinion. Oh, it certainly would. 
It certainly would. And I remember the, the, the last question that was asked before this one, you talked about which player would you rather have, uh, Zadarius Smith, Tyron Matthew, or Marshawn Lattimore. And I, I picked Marshawn Lattimore, but uh, the one that could possibly make the biggest impact would be Zadarius Smith, if Zadarius Smith was like the Zadarius Smith of old. Um, because a pass rusher, yeah, like you mentioned, Javo, it makes life easier for the secondary because they get into the quarterback quicker, so the cornerbacks have less time that they got to cover for. He said, I love, our, I love our front with Travis Jones and Namdi, but we need that outside monster if we're going to win a Super Bowl this year. EDC must learn to go all in. Everyone wants wide receiver, but we honestly don't need one. I'll say get another old lineman and get that monster of a pass rusher and worry about the money later on. Now, that's my favorite part where you said just worry about the money later on because that's what I'm on too. Like, hey. Salary cap, uh, yeah, uh, t- that'll take care of itself. Like, don't even worry about that right now. Do what you got to do to build the best possible team that you can, and then worry about the bread later. 